Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to see whether you can still use the last IBM branded ThinkPad, the T43, for modern tasks nearly 17 years after release. Let's get started. Before we get into using this product in 2022, let's talk about the hardware. This model was branded as an IBM product, but was manufactured by Lenovo, only showing Lenovo's name on a sticker on the bottom of the laptop. Some ThinkPad T60s had IBM and Lenovo's branding, but this was discontinued shortly after release, and this one is the last laptop to only have IBM branding. This particular ThinkPad is in D-tier condition. The left control key is missing and broken, the bottom left touchpad button doesn't work, and the battery holds only 14% of its factory capacity, and only lasts for around 5 minutes on a charge. The speakers also don't currently work, but we'll get into that later. The display is a 1024x768 TFT display that was fine for the time, but hasn't aged too well. This computer makes a loud buzzing sound when the brightness is not set to 100%, presumably due to faulty backlight circuitry, and the CCFL backlight is dimmed significantly over time. The keyboard is very pleasant to type on, but the lack of a left control key is annoying when I try to copy-paste things. The trackpad, like on almost all laptops, is not very enjoyable to use, especially since the left button is broken, but the trackpoint nub as well as the buttons below it still work perfectly and is very nice to use once you get used to it. There's a fingerprint scanner to the right of the trackpad, but it, like most things on this laptop, is faulty. In the top left corner of the laptop, there is an internal microphone. As far as I know, this laptop has quite a bit. On the left, there are two USB 2.0 ports, but sadly, they're the only ones on this laptop. There's also an S-Video port, a dial-up modem port, gigabit ethernet, audio in and out, and two PCMCIA expansion slots. On the back, there's a parallel printer port and a DC power port. Also, can we just appreciate the fact that this laptop has the power port on the back? Not many laptops have this now, and even back then not many did, and I still maintain this is the best place for a power port because it works no matter what side the outlet is on, and you don't have to see ugly cables all over the place, they just are on the back. Anyways, on the right, there is a VGA port, a DVD drive which could be swapped out for a battery or another hard drive, and the hard drive bay. As far as specs go, this computer shipped with a 1.7 GHz Intel Pentium M740 CPU, a 40 GB IDE hard drive, an Intel GMA900 integrated GPU, and 512 MB of DDR2 RAM. I upgraded mine to a 256 GB MSATA SSD in an IDE enclosure, and 2 GB of RAM, which is the most this computer can support. The only reason I even upgraded the hard drive was because the original hard drive stopped spinning up at all during testing. Unfortunately, the enclosure was just a tad bit thicker than the original IDE hard drive, and didn't slide in easily like the old one did. This required me to install it the hard way, by fully disassembling the laptop. Once I installed the hard drive, I put the computer back together, but I forgot to plug in the speaker, so now it doesn't work, and I can't be bothered to reopen the computer again to fix it. With the SSD installed, every time I boot the computer, I am greeted with a message saying that the hard drive is unsupported, which can be fixed with a third-party BIOS mod. However, due to the fact that I can't be bothered, I'm going to leave it as is for now. I booted into a Zubuntu 18.04 32-bit USB drive, and the installation went fine. With the SSD installed, moving around the system and opening applications feels snappy. While the IDE interface is quite slow compared to SATA, most basic applications, such as the file manager, perform perfectly fine. However, just like most low-spec computers, opening a browser really reveals the age of the computer. Web browsing in general is very slow, and YouTube playback is basically impossible even at 360p, with it dropping over 3 quarters of the frames. However, after installing VLC Media Player and manually putting the latest version of YouTube.Lua into the VLC Plugins directory, YouTube played at 720p with no noticeable frame drops. Typing up documents in LibreOffice worked just fine, as did most offline programs. 
However, Google Docs was pretty slow and borderline unusable with insane amounts of input lag. I tried Chromium to see if it would work better, but all recent versions only work on 64-bit computers and I couldn't get the latest version to work. That's a common problem with this computer. The lack of 32-bit software support for Linux. Ubuntu 18.04 is pretty old, the repositories are pretty old, and a lot of stuff just doesn't work very well anymore. And while I could use something like Debian or Arch for a more recent OS, I know Ubuntu better than any other distro and it has the most software compatibility in general. Windows 7 would have better software support, so if you want to see me install that on this computer in the future, let me know down in the comments. I tried to install Minecraft on this computer through MultiMC since the default Minecraft launcher doesn't run on 32-bit. I couldn't get any version to work though. The game either just crashes or shows a blank window. This is due to OpenGL likely not working properly on the Intel GMA900 on Linux. It would probably work on Windows 7 or even Windows XP, but right now this computer is less useful than a potato, since not only can you not run Minecraft on it, you can't even eat it. Overall, this computer is not very useful for modern tasks, due to the 32-bit CPU and underpowered GPU. However, it's still interesting to see what technical advances have happened in the past 17 years. Just a few years later, the Core 2 Duo, a much more capable 64-bit CPU, was being put into laptops, and computers of that era are still much more usable today for casual computing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a like and subscribe if you want. Thanks so much for the recent support on this channel, and I'll see you in the future. Uh, just as I finished recording this video, the laptop stopped properly reading from the hard drive. Uh.